Big corporations and brands trying to be hip and relatable to the youths is nothing new, but it's particularly insufferable when it comes in the form of hashtag funny meme Twitter accounts. Hopping online and seeing Wendy's epically troll McDonald's or an outdated meme from KFC Gaming which exists for some reason or whatever this is is never enjoyable. But there is one exception. A corporate account that's risen above the rest, fascinating not because of its outdated memes or gimmicky Gen Z marketing schemes, but because of its mysterious existence. The account is at Norm of North, an official Twitter account for the 2016 animated children's film Norm of the North, and needless to say the account is completely off the rails. Beginning in 2020 the account began to post surreal and sometimes dark tweets and they've only become more inappropriate as time has gone on. The account has garnered a huge amount of popularity because of these bizarre tweets and theories have circulated about why they exist. So what is going on here? Today let's take a deep dive into the Norm of the North Twitter account rabbit hole from the movie's bizarre online presence to the strange mystery behind its very existence. So before we dive into the Norm of the North Twitter account itself, we first regrettably have to take a look at the source material. Norm of the North is an animated adventure comedy film released in 2016 by Lionsgate. The weirdly convoluted plot follows Norm, a polar bear who can't hunt and is thus an outcast in the Arctic with very few friends. As tourists begin to swarm the Arctic and a corrupt company moves in with plans to build luxury condos on the ice, Norm decides to stow away on a ship to New York with the goal of convincing the humans not to move there. See, while Norm can't hunt, hunt and doesn't contribute anything to polar bear society seemingly, he can talk to humans. So he and some comic relief lemmings arrive and get up to all kinds of hijinks, you know it's that whole wild animals are let loose in the big city, what crazy stuff will they get up to trope that kids movies seem to love. The CEO of the housing development company is set up as the bad guy, Norm befriends some humans that try to help him bring the company down, there are goofs, there are gaffs, there are fart jokes aplenty. Eventually after the conflict and climax of the movie, the bad guys are exposed as corrupt, the arctic is saved and Norm's pathetic existence is validated because he did one good thing, yay for him. The movie ends with him having a bunch of kids with the love interest polar bear because these movies always feature some kind of weird romantic subplot. The end. Norm of the North very quickly became infamous for its poor quality. Despite having a star-studded cast including actors such as Ken Jeong, Bill Nye, Gabriel Iglesias, Roose Bolton and Rob Schneider as Norm, and also for some reason James Corden but only in the UK release of the movie, it received overwhelmingly negative reviews. Not only was the plot just a lot to deal with, the synopsis I gave doesn't even cover the many wildly fluctuating and random plot threads, the unbearably irritating cast of characters, or the infamous extended scenes where the lemmings pee into a fish tank in complete silence for about 30 seconds, but it was just generally a very low quality product. And the movie's humour essentially consisted of fart jokes and twerking. The animation was pretty rough, the voice lines were consistently out of sync, the characters had that really uncannily detailed fur that some of these cheaper movies have, the character designs were uninspired to actively gross and it overall just looked like a cheap knockoff. To be clear I don't blame the animators at all here, I blame the fact that these cheaper movies tend to have lower budgets and more crunch time leading to the employees having to cut corners to make the movie. It's also worth mentioning that Norm of the North was originally intended to be a straight to DVD film but just happened to get a theatrical release so the reason that it looks like a $3 bargain bin straight to DVD movie is because it literally is that. In a review for Empire, critic James White wrote quote, We wouldn't recommend you to watch it even after you've burned through every other possibility and that includes a blank screen. One of the many scathing reviews on IMDb reads, The animation is cheap, the story is stupid, the characters are really stupid and by god those lemmings, they are the worst characters in any piece of animation I have ever seen. I'm not joking, they make the minions look like noble high class security guards in comparison. The lemmings I wanted dead from the moment they came on screen. They are comic relief characters, the worst kind of character, they offer no comedy, just pee and fart jokes galore and they literally dedicate several minutes of this movie to potty humour. It temporarily had a staggering 0% on Rotten Tomatoes which has now gone up to a generous 6 and it's considered to be one of the lowest rated films on the site, a considerable achievement given the competition. However, despite all of this, the movie was weirdly kind of a hit. The trailer on YouTube has over 2 million views and is worth 
word spread about the movie, no doubt helped by the hashtag shake your bear thing tag that Lionsgate was trying to get trending, it got a lot of attention. YouTube was flooded with comedic reviews trashing the movie, people joked about it on Twitter, review sites were swamped as critics flocked to bring the star rating down, and most importantly of all, people actually went to see it. Studios don't really care whether people are watching their movies out of love or hate, to them it's just a numbers game, and despite the abysmal rating of the movie, the numbers were pretty good. From an $18 million budget, yes that was the actual budget, they made just over $30 million. Not amazing or anything, but still a pretty decent profit, and unfortunately this meant that more Norm of the North movies were on the horizon. Norm of the North Keys to the Kingdom was released in 2018, Norm of the North King Sized Adventure came just a year later in 2019, and last up was Norm of the North Family Vacation in 2020. Needless to say, none of these released in theaters and were all pretty much straight to DVD and streaming platforms. Essentially, Norm had become a series, he'd become a brand, he was part of the Norm Cinematic Universe, or the NOTNCU if you will. This wasn't just a one and done thing, and thus Lionsgate wanted the movie to have some sort of social media presence to keep prospective new watchers and fans alike engaged. Which leads us to... The Twitter account at Norm of North was set up in 2015, a year before the movie was slated to release, and its first tweet came in 2015 as well. Hashtag Norm of the North coming to theaters 2016. After that, a trailer clip. And for over five years, the account would continue posting very normal brand content. Retweets of parents going to Norm with their kids, a few giveaways, some arts and crafts, and a couple of movie snippets here and there. Granted, it was a pretty good example of the classic lame boomer corporate account, you know, they would try to make hip memes and funnies to relate to the youth, and it always came off as a bit disingenuous and out of touch. Let me take a selfie, hashtag Norm of the North has hit the big city and found his lighting. The Arctic wasn't ready for all his jelly. Searching for your mum when she leaves you at the register. Happy ice cream for breakfast day, we sure love some ice cream fur breakfast ice cream emoji what's your favorite flavor hashtag norm of the north hashtag ice cream for breakfast day when you remember that hashtag king sized adventure comes out in 11 days hashtag friday feeling hashtag norm of the north they also posted the most ridiculous maze game i've ever seen they didn't even try, did they? A lot of replies to these posts were either oblivious parents enthusing about their kids going to see it, some were shaming the movie's low quality, and then of course you have the ratios and silence brand memes that you always get with corporate accounts. But for the most part, these posts didn't really get any attention, they rarely got more than 30 likes, and comments were few and far between. The first tweet that raised eyebrows came in May of 2020. It was a photo of Norm with the caption, Norm, hard eyes emoji, hashtag first cartoon crush. Now this tweet was tame and in comparison to what came after, but at the time it was a pretty odd and very out of place tweet on the account. It ended up getting a lot of engagement, over 2,000 likes, which was pretty unprecedented for Norm at the time. The account went back to normal for a while, but a tweet in March of 2021 which simply said Norm of the North in all lowercase letters blew up and gained over 30,000 likes. From here, the floodgates opened, the carnage had begun, and Norm of the North ceased to be a regular corporate account and began its descent into insanity. Who wants a hashtag Norm of the North mini poster? Damaged. Norm has joined the cast of Knives Out 2. Norm is ready. You just got Norm of the North. Repost this image to Norm of the North your friends. Pride Month. Who wants these socks? With a picture of just the most horrid pair of crinkled Norm of the North branded socks on a bed covered in cat hair. One of the most popular tweets was this one. It was a low quality deep fried repost of a word search that the Norm Twitter account had posted a few years earlier, except this one had the word porn pretty clearly edited into it. This tweet got over 40,000 likes as people shared it around, expressing confusion at whether this was a troll or a corporate Twitter account fail. This is actually how a lot of people found the Norm of the North account. They saw this post, wondered what the hell was going on, went to the account and saw the absolute insanity that was going down there. The strange tweets continued through 2021, and 2022. Would you buy Norm of the North Jordans? I don't know if I can do this anymore. Norm wants to fight the wolf from Alpha and Omega. Help. <laughs> Animated polar bear movie. Norm has been missing for six days. Oh god, they found him. The tweets became markedly more inappropriate as the account gained traction, which was both shocking and highly amusing to people given the fact that this was a Twitter account for a children's movie. My Norm is North as fuck right now. Norm of the North was an inside job. Norm of the North metaverse movie where Norm and the wolf from Alpha and Omega blank. Fill in the blank for a chance to win some Norm socks. Norm likes his ice thick. Norm has just finished reading the Communist Manifesto. What's the worst thing I could tweet right now? Norm has been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Norm has checked out of rehab.
Norm has relapsed. Norm's fifth movie will be titled Norm of the North, Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves? Sea of these nuts fit in your mouth. <laughs> Hilariously, Lionsgate's apparent plans for a Sea of Thieves movie was added to the Wikipedia page for the movie. Unironically or not, it's hard to tell. They also reposted an old Norm of the North snack tutorial, but with a is a little something extra edited into the final panel. So genuinely, what on earth is going on here? There are countless examples of corporate brands using memes and funny tweets to try and be hit with the kids, but even the brands that appeal most aggressively to surreal Gen Z humor don't usually go as far as to reference 9-11, drug addiction, diabetes, or communism. Nor will they imply that two beloved children's characters are going to, well, fill in the blanks yourself. The initial theory, of course, was that the account had been hacked. The content of the tweet contrasted pretty starkly with the wholesome family fun of the films and Twitter users couldn't really believe that a corporate account for a kids movie would post this stuff. Belief in this theory was strengthened when the account tweeted out quote, I can literally tweet anything I want with several replies asking if the account had been hacked. However, the story took a twist when half a year later the account made a tweet reading, they fired me months ago. This tweet got an insane response, over 130,000 likes, and it spurred on a new theory among norm theorists. They proposed that the account was being run by some underpaid ex-intern at Lionsgate. After family vacation in 2020, no further movies were announced or seemingly in the works, and this is when the weird tweet started. It's theorized that at that point, since Lionsgate didn't really have any need for new marketing material, they forgot about Norm of the North and the associated Twitter account. The intern originally in charge of churning out half-assed norm memes and trailer clips that would inevitably get 10 likes would have still had access to the social media despite the fact that, according to their tweet, they were fired from their job at Lionsgate. From here, with nothing to lose, they began messing around with the account. Their posts gradually became more edgy and outrageous as the account picked up steam and got viral post after viral post. On October 9th of 2022, at Norm of North posted, quote, I just got a call from Lionsgate. This is the end. This tweet has over 100,000 likes and the replies are overwhelmingly mournful, with Twitter users begging Lionsgate not to kick the intern from the page and lamenting all of their heartfelt memories of Norm. Though a lot of these replies are ironic and meme there's still a vibe of genuine disappointment and even sadness. The Norm of the North account was genuinely funny at points, it stood out as a beacon, a ray of light among all the other soulless corporate accounts. Even at their edgiest and most hip, you can tell that Wendy's and McDonald's and all these other big brands have a carefully curated PR team and their ultimate goal is to endear themselves to teens on social media to sell more burgers or whatever. I don't care how many BuzzFeed articles there are about these companies hashtag epically roasting people, it's never gonna be funny. But Norm... Norm was different. Norm tweeted like an average Twitter user, and the average Twitter user is insane. The response shifted from clowning on a brand account to shock and surprise, to regular goofs and gaffes, to finally a sort of kinship and appreciation for the account. It had finally happened. A corporate account had been unironically accepted by Twitter users as one of them. But things may not be all that they seem. Where there are theories, there are also conspiracy theories, and some believe that this wasn't the work of a rogue intern, but instead a genius marketing stunt by Lionsgate. Because when you think about it, Norma the North's Twitter account would never have blown up like it did without these weird tweets. They went from getting 5 or 10 likes on a post to 5,000 likes, 10,000 likes, 30,000 likes, even 100,000 likes, and they went from a handful of followers to 90,000 Norm superfans. Regardless of how unorthodox and admittedly inappropriate it was, objectively it was an incredible PR move and boosted the account's engagement tenfold. I wouldn't be surprised if they sold a decent number of copies of the movie just because fans of the account wanted to have a bad movie night with friends or do a Norm of the North marathon for the memes. Though the Norm account did tweet out several references to working at Lionsgate and also being fired from the company, there's no way to verify that these aren't just jokes. Lending credibility to this theory is the fact that shortly before the Norm account started getting weird, the official Lionsgate account made this post, listing out their top top five movies, which included all four Norm movies and American Psycho. There are actually quite a few pretty striking examples of the official Lionsgate account posting very similar memes on their own account. Vague or sometimes overt sexual references, edgy posts using current Twitter meme trends, using quote unquote internet slang, etc. Sometimes the tweets are exactly the same, such as this fill in the blanks tweet about Pedro Pascal that closely resembles the Alpha and Omega tweet. Or these kind of goofy one word style tweets like Josh Hutchison or Movie, again very similar to many of the Norm tweets. 
I reached out to my friend Paige at Neo Solarius on Twitter who works as a community manager and developer for the game studio Agro Crab. She has a lot of experience and knowledge about social media management and campaigns so I wanted to get her take on the Norm Twitter account. Quote, I'm like 85% sure that it's an elaborate PR move by the company. I reckon it would have been a rogue ex-employee if they weren't directly followed by Lionsgate who also has a somewhat unhinged account. Lionsgate's Twitter is more on the aha daddy humour but their TikTok is pretty out of pocket. I think they noticed that the movie was just doing kind of garbo and were like hey do whatever to boost sales and traction on this IP and with the whole trend of being like the Wendy's account they decided to just fuck around and find out. I also think it's a PR strategy because they still have verification. A lot of accounts are trying to inherit the Duolingo and Wendy's style of marketing so I really wouldn't be surprised if that's what this is and it was slightly more than what they were planning. I hope Norm is doing well. And yeah that is a really good point. The Norm of the North Twitter account does indeed still have verification even though the account has been posting these wild tweets for several years at this point. Paige also noted that it's likely that Twitter itself would have actually reached out to the account to check that everything was okay since if a verified account becomes hacked or starts posting genuinely harmful material it could reflect badly on them. And even if an employee did change the password and hijack the account it doesn't seem like it would be that hard for Lionsgate to get Twitter to take it down or even take legal action if necessary. Basically it seems unlikely that Lionsgate would have been left floundering with no way to take action against the account. Unlikely, but not impossible. Paige noted that there's still a chance that the rogue employee theory could be true, quote, On the other hand, 15% of me thinks it could be similar to the Rainbow Fish account who literally got fired and lost the verification mark after one tweet, and the guy who just never logged out and the people in charge of Rainbow Fish didn't understand how to kick them off. I kinda hope it's like that because that's funny as shit. So to give context for this, back in 2021 there was a really similar situation with the Twitter account, but this time it was the official Rainbow Fish Twitter account, you know, from the Rainbow Fish kids books. It began tweeting out extremely inappropriate things, some of which I literally can't even show in this video, much to the shock and appall of parents everywhere. One of their most famous tweets where they reply to a tweet of a primary school teacher showing off her kids rainbow fish drawings with, I'm sorry but these look like shit, gained a huge amount of attention and made headlines. Especially when the account followed up with tweets such as, two days into my first social media job and I already lost their fucking verification and, they don't pay you enough, they don't pay me at all bro, I got fired in March and never logged out. The the Rainbow Fish Twitter account went insanely viral and became an instant classic on the platform and reposts of Rainbow Fish's tweets still get thousands of likes to this day. But looking into this whole situation it turns out that this is actually a hoax. Rainbow Fish never had verification, it was just photoshopped and the account was never official in any capacity, just a parody. This may seem like a whole unrelated tangent but it plays an important role in our investigation. Taking into account all of the things that we've talked about so far, here's my theory on what happened. Realizing that they had a garbage IP with a very low stakes online presence, Lionsgate started messing around with the Norm of the North Twitter account. They had already been dipping their toes into the pool of surreal Gen Z Twitter memes on their main account so this was the perfect environment to just go ham and see what happened. The first tweets hinting that an employee had gone rogue weren't posted until several months after the Rainbow Fish account had blown up. After seeing the huge success of that account and how funny people found the concept of of a disgruntled employee hijacking a children's brand account for mischief, they may have copied the idea. This was, as we can see from the engagement on those tweets, hugely successful. As we mentioned earlier, the account blew up, going from an out of touch corporate account getting a handful of likes each post to a bona fide Twitter Hall of Fame account with multiple viral tweets. Even though their tweets seemed wildly inappropriate, as Paige stated, several other big name brands have started posting equally if not more edgy posts in the last few years, so it's not unheard of. Plus, in comparison to the Rainbow Fish account, the Norm account is actually pretty tame. If it really were just a disgruntled ex-employee playing a prank by hijacking the account and posting whatever, it wouldn't make sense for them to hold back in the way that they did and not just post the most edgy shit that they could have found. It doesn't make sense unless the person behind the account was Lionsgate who did have a reputation to uphold. They were willing to push the envelope but not push it far enough as to sully their own reputation or actually get cancelled. On the topic of the final post, Paige wrote, quote, With the most recent tweet being like, I got the call from Lionsgate, this is the end, it also could have been a short marketing campaign with a plan to end, or some higher ups decided that they didn't like this marketing strategy since it's a kids movie so the CM was like, fuck it, let's end it like this. 
Ultimately, we won't get any closer to the truth until the account posts again. It's possible that the Lionsgate call tweet is just another meme and the account will soon resume their shit posting. It's also possible that this is just an in-character way of announcing the Norm project's end either due to the company only wanting a limited campaign or because of bad press due to the offensive content. I think the former is more likely than the latter, but you never know. Well, after doing all this research, I fall pretty firmly on the side of it being a PR stunt by Lionsgate, and if not a PR stunt, maybe just something that the employees did with the blessing of the company, it wasn't just some rogue employee, but I mean, it's entirely possible and I'm really curious to hear what you guys think. There's a lot of stuff going on here, there's not a lot of information and we can only really extrapolate stuff that has been posted from the account, and it's all pretty vague, so I'd be very curious to hear if more stuff comes out, and also very curious to hear what you guys think. Like I said, there's a lot of theories, and I really want to know if any of you guys think it was an employee, it was hacking, or it really was Lionsgate. I really hope that this isn't the end of the Norm of the North account, like I really hope they don't delete it. Um, I actually made this video because my friend Kenzie, who I'll, I'll link her Twitter just like here, um, she suggested me to make it because, you know, she was saying like, oh, you know, it might get deleted in the future, so <laughs> it's a good idea to like archive it now. And yeah, I thought that was a good idea, so uh, thanks to Kenzie. Um, also, thank you so much to Paige um, for her input, that was like super cool to be able to chat with her and get her thoughts on the whole situation. And thank you to you guys for watching, and I really hope to see you in the next one. Bye! A huge thank you to my Garfield overlords over on Patreon. Test Subject 0089, Caramel Coffee Bean, Blue Mayfeld, Electro Kitten, Katrina Likes 5e Stuff, Fitzy, Jorge K. Cruz, Michelle Olsen, Matt LRJ, SHSL Sunsun, Doug, Jordan Nielsen, Dana Homegardner, Charlie B, Simon, John Leach, Ren Pendragon, Pom, Xavier Araujo, Helm Hamburger Hand, Dozo Blint, Sheriff Whiskey, The Furby Librarian, Astrian Vortex, Jesse Chisholm, Grip Gunderson, Joe Bradshaw, and Arcantilus. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, it means the world to me. If you want to join these guys over on Patreon, the link will be in the description. And yeah, thank you guys so much, um, it means the world. I really hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!